Hello, it's Myra here and in this tutorial we're going to learn how to work an easy envelope border but it still has this slip stitch round in it. I'm just about finished working the slip stitch round and one of the reasons I like a slip stitch round is because I like the framing that it gives to the body of the blanket. When working on the slip stitch round always remember and work with a hook size one size larger than the hook size you worked with on the body. When working on the slip stitch round, you're working the slip stitch into the back loop of the previous row. When you get to the corner, think about where the placement of the slip stitch is going to be on this next side. My slip stitch is going to be on the outside of that purple column. Therefore, I'm going to make a slip stitch at the top stitch of that column and then I'm ready to do the two chain stitches that are going to get me around the corner. Once you've worked your two chain stitches, you're ready now to work down the side of your blanket. Now there should be holes fairly obvious where you're wanting to place your um, hook into when you go down the blanket. So you're looking for the very first one, the, the top one, after your chain stitches. And then you're going to pull your a rows apart to be able to see the hole. If you can't see the hole quite easily, do pull the rows apart. You'll see me doing this in a minute. I'm quite happily pull the rows. There you can see, you can pull in the rows apart so I can actually see that hole where to place my hook in a lot easier by pulling them apart. I tend to do it automatically when I'm working. Sometimes the um, hole is a little bit harder to see than other times and sometimes you can see it quite easily. Continue working down this side, um, placing your hook into that hole and working slip stitches. Do make sure that you don't trap your ends of the rows in between your stitches. They should be flowing quite freely. That's why I tend to pull them over to the right hand side. Let's have a look how sharp the corner is. This is what we're looking for in our corner. A nice sharp corner because when we come to do the first row of our border. We want that corner to be nice and sharp. End your slip stitch round with an invisible join and then turn over to the back of your blanket because we're going to be working into the back now. And because we're going to be working trebles, your hook size that you're working on is one size down from the hook that you worked on the body. The stitch that you want to be going into is the stitch below the little back line that you get from the slip stitch rounds. You can see that little gra green hook and we're going into the stitch below that. It kind of sits in the middle of the two little dashes. So insert your hook into the stitch underneath the slip stitch row and then work three chains and then we're going to be working a treble stitch into the stitches below can see here they go below the little green dashes that you actually have from your slip stitch row. Now we're just about at the corner we want to ensure that we get a nice tight corner stitch going round. I'm just at the last stitch at the corner here so I'm going to be working my corner stitches into this. Now the corner stitches when you're working the background is two trebles, two chains and two trebles into the same stitch. So I've now worked my first treble into that stitch. I'm now going to put another treble into the same stitch. So that's my second treble in my corner stitch. Now two chains and now another two trebles into the same stitch. And that gives you that nice tight corner. That's the first treble and the second treble. Now because we're going down the side and we've got all the different row colours, we can actually see quite easily where we should be picking up. And where we're picking up is the stitch underneath the slip stitch. You can see I'm picking up just the stitch literally underneath that slip stitch. Sometimes I get one stitch, sometimes I get two stitch. I've picked up two stitches there. It doesn't matter because it's not going to show up on the front. So if you are struggling to get your hook into just one stitch, 
you can see I've again picked up two stitches there. Don't be too concerned that um, you're getting you're having to pick up two stitches because when we look, there is no difference at all. Continue working your trebles all the way around your blanket and remember at the corner you're working into that same stitch to get that nice tight corner. You can see that slip stitch round and there's our stitches below looking nice and neat. You end your round with an invisible join and because it's a treble you're going to work into the first treble stitch, not the chain stitches, the first treble stitch. So get your big eye darning needle and thread it up and remember not the chain stitches but the first treble stitch and you're going through both loops of that treble stitch pulling your yarn through not too tightly and then going back into the centre of the last stitch that you created and that gives us a nice invisible join you'll then just weave in your ends when you're ready to weave in all the ends at a later date now we've completed the first row of our back border and our slip stitch round, we're now ready to look at the first round of our front border. I'm going to look at my pattern to see what colours I'm supposed to be using. There's no pattern in this border, it's quite simple. So the slip stitch round is my green round, which is the colour purple on my chart, and the grey round is my colour B colour and my colour B colour is that lilac colour and then again I'm going to finish with a colour C which is my slip stitch round colour. So the chart says to start at that um, red square I am actually going to start at the right hand side of my corner not the left hand side of my corner just simply because I want to demonstrate a corner to you and I don't want to have to um, crochet all the way to the corner before I can actually record it. Front border we use the same hook size that we used on the body and we're going to be starting in a back loop because we're working in the back loop of our slip stitch round. We're going to insert our hook and we're going to join our new colour, our colour B, with a chain stitch. So to join our colour B I'm going to just create a, just pull the stitch through and work a chain stitch. Now I'm ready to work double crochet back loop all the way around my blanket. Remembering when I get to the corner I've got two chain to work. When we get to the corner remember there's already two chain that's been worked in the corner that we worked on our slip stitch round. I'm just working the last stitch there. Now I've got to the two chain at my corner I'm just inserting my hook into the centre of the chain and working my double crochet then I'm going to do two chain to get me around the corner and then the next stitch that I'm going to work is into the next chain from the slip stitch round. So those two chain from the slip stitch round you actually work as they're a normal stitch and now I'm ready to carry on working my double crochet all the way around the blanket remembering when I get to the corner to work the two chain and when you get back to the beginning you're going to be working an invisible join into the first double crochet not the chain stitch that you created the first double crochet so the chain stitch you ignore and you work your invisible join into that first double crochet as before, when you created the invisible join for the background, you go through the top two loops of that first double crochet stitch and then you go through the centre of the very last stitch on your round. And now I've completed that front border, you can see why I like the slip stitch round, because it really does frame my body. And I do like picking up the very last round on the border with the same colour as the slip stitch round. Now I've completed my front, or done a few rounds of the front if it's a large border, and I've completed the first round of the back, I'm going to deal with all these ends now. Because this is quite a small border, 
I'm going to tie all my ends. I don't always tie my ends because I tend to work with um, wool and wool does felt. But because this is going to be cut down to about a centimetre and a half these ends because the border is relatively small, I am going to tie them. So get yourself a good programme to watch on television or a good podcast to listen and enjoy tying off your ends. Once they're all tied, you're now ready to cut them. And as I said before, I'm going to cut mine down to about a centimetre and a half. So I would advise using, um, if you have fabric scissors, if not, use very sharp scissors, not small scissors. Now you can see I'm going about a centimetre and a half there, and I'm just cutting them all down. They're going to be pretty short once they're cut, which is the reason why I tied them in the first place. So I'm just going to check that, yep, that my size that I've cut my ends to fit into my front border. And do be aware that when you're cutting these ends, make sure that you have your front border tucked under your blanket so you don't inadvertently cut it. I've now completed two rounds of the back border. Before I do the third round of the back border, which is the last round, I'm going to add some stitch markers into the back border and also onto the front border. I've done this so that I can readjust the third round of my back border if necessary. I'm going to use colour C, which is my green yarn, for round three of my back border. Having now worked out my stitch count for my front border and round two of the back border, I know that I've got to add some stitches into round three on every single side. It's worth doing this stitch counts because it means when you come to join the two edges together, you know your stitch counts will be correct. I'm starting just before the corner and I've counted four stitches back on each side and I'm picking up the top loops of both the front and the back. You can see there my hook's already inserted. I'm going to join my yarn with a chain stitch and then I'm going to work a back loop slip stitch through both edges and that, this is what joins the edges together. This back loop slip stitch join and I'm going to work that all the way around my blanket. There's no extra stitches at the corner, you just work the corner chains joining them together. That's where I am now, I'm actually picking up the corner chains and they can be slightly tricky sometimes to pick up. Here you go, I've got the back one done now. I've got one more corner chain to do here. That's the second chain. So you don't add extra chains at the corner, you just join the corner chains together. Once I've done that, I'm round the corner and on to the next side. So I'm going to work this slip stitch back loop only all the way around the blanket until I get back to the first stitch and again, I'll be joining it with an invisible stitch. And there we can see how neat that corner looks that's joined up with the slip stitches. Just a few more stitches on this edge to go and then the blanket will be finished. It'll be a wrap. However, before I get to those last few stitches, I'm just going to deal with the end of the very first stitch. Before that, I will tuck the end into the centre of the blanket, into the envelope border, but I am just going to weave in that stitch as well, or that end actually. I'm just going to take a few stitches and weave it into the edge there, into the green edge. And then I'm going to tuck the end of that into the center of the envelope border. There's no reason to cut it. You can just tuck it into the center there. I'm now ready to finish those last few stitches. There we go. I can actually join my hook again. Finish those last few stitches and then we're ready to have a look at how we work an invisible join into the last slip stitch. Once you've worked the last slip stitch, pull your yarn through and cut the yarn uh, to finish it off. There we go, cut the yarn, and then just pull the yarn through, and we're going to get our darning needle, and we're going to create an invisible stitch now. 
Creating the invisible stitch here is no different than creating the invisible stitches you have already created for the other rounds. Identify what was the chain stitch you created. There we go, that's the chain stitches that I created. And then I'm looking for the very first slip stitch. So there's the first slip stitch. I'm going to go through both of the loops of that. And then I'm going back into the last stitch and inserting my needle through the center of the last stitch. This time I'm going to push it all the way down through the border edge at the back. Now I'm going to have to weave this edge, this end, through the different stitches. And I do it quite a few times, you'll see me. And I'm picking actually up tiny little stitches in the um, last, in that last border round. You can see I've gone back a few times and I am going through the stitches so I'm actually picking up the fibres so that I can actually um, make sure that the edge won't ever come out. Once I've done that a few times I'll pull it a little bit tighter so I've actually got a little bit of slack to then pull so that the edge, the end gets lost in the border. And now we've got a nice neat border Nice neat envelope border on our blanket. If we have a look at both the back and then we turn it so we can actually see what the front looks like, we've got a nice beautiful envelope border. I hope you found this video tutorial useful. The pattern that I've been working on is called New Beginnings and it can be found in my web shop and my Ravelry store. Thank you.